नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू दिस एक्साइटिंग एपिसोड ऑफ सत्तोलॉजी डी बंकिंग मिथोलॉजी सत मीन्स ट्रूथ लोगोस मीन्स स्टडी और साइंस सत्तोलॉजी मीन्स साइंस ऑफ ट्रूथ और स्टडी ऑफ ट्रूथ अपोजिट ऑफ दैट इज मिथोलॉजी विच मीन्स साइंस ऑफ फेक लाइ इमेजिनेशन और स्टडी ऑफ फेक लाइ इमेजिनेशन टूडे वी आर डिस्कसिंग समथिंग वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट आई थिंक इट्स बीन ए पॉपुलर डिमांड एंड आई हैव वेरी वेरी स्पेशल गेस्ट एंड आई यूज ऑल द एब्जेक्टिव and rishi muni tapasvi and swadhyay person who is doing swadhyay personally in their own family so without delay let us welcome shri nilesh nilkant ok namaskar aditya ji namaskar namaskar uh, today like lot of controversies are going on when we talk about you see one aspect is just make a youtube video and to gain followers by misleading people or you know sometimes i don't speak on many topics because i don't know and i cannot as i have to study them to to speak on it and when you talk about sagun and nirgun now gun is three types rajagun tamagun and satu the top is satagun rajagun tamagun <coughs> so means sagun means one who has absorbed the the three modes or teen guna three guna and nirgun means who doesn't have the impact of three guna like some so can you throw some light on this from your perspective uh yeah namaskar aditya ji uh, and our viewers uh, well this is a subject by itself i mean we can go on five lecture series on this okay. so uh, you can stop me but i'll try to keep it uh, succinct as succinct as possible uh so one is like a saguna nirguna upasana okay that's a one aspect of it but the it meanings is the same uh you said very well that saguna means incorporation of the three modes of material nature sattva raja tama the person who is influenced by them let's say okay uh, take bhakti as a subject and uh, bhagavat puran talks about kanishta bhakta madhyam bhakta and uttam bhakta nice. now kanishta bhakta now kanishta is the first stage it's not a inferior stage okay because somebody will say no no i don't want to be kanishta bhakta no that is not a choice when the child uh, is born first it turns on its uh, side right. then it crawls then it stands up and then it walks that's the journey so the kanishta bhakta takes interest only in a puja for example ishwara ishwara murti now that is a very very saguna bhakti you can say okay uh, i'm not saying it's of a lower kind i'm just saying it's a beginning it's a foundation okay Uh, so the person does that but that person will not able to see divinity in others other individuals okay no cannot maybe his guru her guru maximum but not beyond that madhyama bhakta will again he is also in the three modes of material nature he has to you know he is looking at the society for practical purposes very pragmatically he divides them into few categories you know ishvare tad adineshu balisheshu dvishatsucha four kinds you know uh, and deal with them accordingly but which means he is also distinguishing you know okay uh, which is to say vyuha samuha you know vyuha samuha so vyuha is a classification he is classifying the last one Uh, the uttama bhakta he does not see any difference among any set so now he is a samuha he brings everyone together in the sense he sees the same way it's a journey and you cannot say it starts with a saguna and it ends in a nirguna no actually you need the both it's like a rail track that's right you need the saguna and nirguna to make progress that's just my short answer and and very good answer nilesh ji and uh, you connected that with purana references also <clears throat> because some people they think that puran is not to be quoted or not to be referenced why do people say that uh we keep on hearing this one kind of comments but hmm. you quoted it and very relevantly quoted it and most of the acharyas they quote puran most of hmm. the uh, people have quoted quran in in our sampradaya now the next point is and which leads to the topic today also the we all you know i see very state lot of statements like i am a sanatani i am a sanatani i am a sanatani now sanatan dharma is followed through the varnashram it is the it is the implementation methodology of to implement sanatan dharma yeah and if you look at uh, right from like uh, uh, right from satyug to kaliyug hmm. hmm. the varna 
never disappears because it's a natural classification uh, of society. Yes. So the, now we'll talk the second part about the ashram, which is the stage of spiritual development, and I think which will lead to your presentation also. So in the so the four ashram have you know only one is remaining right now because the first, third, and the fourth people think it's bad. Hmm. Yeah? So mm-hmm. I'll uh, come to the point of uh, second one, which is the Grahastha Ashram, which is glorified by Vyasdev himself. Yeah. And but it doesn't say that they are minimizing other three. Correct. He doesn't say that Brahmacharya because without a good Brahmacharya, you cannot have good Grahastha Ashram. Right. So, and if you look at the Western world, so I like to with that you, you can start with the presentation and you can answer this question. What is your okay. view on the Avarnashram as a implementation methodology for Sanatan? Okay. Uh, well, before starting the presentation, because you said, what is my view on the Varnashram? And even in the context of uh, Tapa, Saguna, Nirguna, uh, Brahmacharya, you know, I mean, Ahimsa, Tapa, everything. Uh, again, uh, and you said, some people say, don't quote Puranas. I don't know who those people are. And, you know, they can have their own views. Uh, if it serves them, that's perfectly fine. For example, there is no point somebody asking me, why do I not quote uh, from Brahma Bindu Upanishad. Actually, I do. My point is, well, it doesn't suit me, for example, for whatever reason, or I have not studied it. There can be many reasons. Uh, sometime, I don't know uh, what specific individual or a organization or any uh, particular sampradha you had in mind. One of the reasons for people uh, showing some hesitation towards Purana could be for this reason. And I, I I'll just state it and I'll say, if that is the reason, then I would even tend to agree with them, you know, which is to say Purana is a Smriti literature, Mm -hmm. which means like remembered. And so what happens is when nothing is available, like absolutely nothing, like, for example, uh, a mission to uh, Uranus, you know, we are doing, we have done mission to moon and mission to Mars, right? And then of course, Jupiter, Saturn, but no mission to Uranus. We have absolutely nothing on it. Which means in that case, we will start from a scratch. In a Purana context, when Purana wanted to write something about some ancient event or some aspect of our dharma, and they, the individual Purana writer or the person who was updating Purana did not have access to much information for whatever reason, you know, separated by location, geography, whatnot. The person tried to collect the information from whoever he can. Just like, you know, we ask the elders, if you want to know something about it. I used to ask my father, 1947, you know, what was the atmosphere? Because I was not there, but he was there as a young boy, right? Something like this. So we, so Purana tend to sometimes write down their experiences, their opinions, whatever they knew. Just because if somebody said it doesn't mean it's always valid. That's okay. Right. Uh, so therefore... Uh, Some people may show some hesitation, but frankly, Shankaracharya has said it very well. That applies to everything. That applies to even the Vedas. Even the Vedas are to be accepted on the Pratyaksha Pramana. That's why Shankaracharya says, if even the Shruti says that the Agni is cold, we cannot accept that. Even if Shruti is saying it, we cannot accept that because it goes against our experience. Okay, so that's one point. Now quickly again, but I will quote Purana for the Varnashram that the question you ask, and then we'll get into our uh, quick presentation. Um, What does Bhagavad Purana again says? Okay. Uh, So for the, uh, for the ashram, okay. Uh, It will say Sarvashrama. This is uh, Uddhav Gita. Krishna telling Uddhava. Sarvashrama prayuktoyam niyama kulanandana. That kulanandana is Krishna referring to Uddhava from his kula, right? Sarvashrama prayuktoyam niyama kulanandana. You said only one ashram is remaining, like you meant Grastha possibly, right? And all right. other three ashramas are gone. Yeah, I, would I, say, I, did not, I did not say remaining. I said that one is given uh, preference of, preference in Kali Yuga more. Yeah, right. yeah. And we will talk about that, by the way. You know, I mean, they think they are giving a preference, but I, are they even doing that? You know, so Sarvashrama prayuktoyam niyama kulanandana. And the next line is very important. He says, Madhava, Krishna is telling, Madhava Sarva Bhuteshu. Okay. Madhava Sarva Bhuteshu. Mano, Mano, Vak, Kaya, Sayyamaha. It does not matter in which ashram you are. That's right. Okay. Madhava, your Bhava, your 
whole mind, you know, should be in that Brahma, the Krishna, Madhbhava, meaning Mad meaning Krishna. Madhbhava Sarva Bhuteshu, and that same bhav should be there for all the living entities and not just human beings, by the way, but even going beyond that. And one more thing, Mano Vak Kaya Sayama, Sayama, that Sayama you will see everywhere. Mana, like you are thinking, Vak, that is a buddhi, like because communication and kaya, the whole sharira, sayam of all these three is true for all ashrama. And you know what I will say? This is a minimum common program. That's right. So there is more. So in that sense, we can talk about ashrama. We can also talk about the varna. Okay. Ayusa satya masteya, o kama krodha lobata. Okay. So bhuta priya hite hacha dharmoyam sarva varni kaha for all the varnas ahimsa satya mastaya a kama a krodha a lobha. That's right. And bhuta priya hite hacha thinking, always thinking, this is important, always the nishtha, the conviction, always thinking of the well being of everyone to the best of your ability, you know, is, is what you need to do. Let's, let's share that. So okay. you want to add something you can add while I uh, share it, by the way. Yeah. And one point also in Bhagavad Purana, again, I'll quote Varnasha Vibhagasya, and, and it is said, Samsiddhi Haritoshanam. Hmm. So again, the Vacha, Kaya, Mana. So, so all three, again, Samsiddhi Haritoshanam. So that is yeah. the purpose, like you said, correct, you know. So you have started, you know. Correct. So, no, no, this was good uh, because, again, um, um, like we're talking Purana and uh, Bhagavad Purana. I mean, of course, I like mm, all Puranas, but Bhagavad Purana kind of like, you know, very satisfying to the... Very satisfying. Very satisfying. So yeah, that's why, I mean, if we, we can just go on quoting and like, you know, and I hope people see that when Aditya Ji, you and me are talking, we are not doing this as some kind of competition, like how, how, many, right. how many versus we know, because I just said, you know, for something like immediately... It reminds you of That's another right. thing, you know, Manova, Kaya, Sayama, how, how that comes. And it never goes away. You yes. know, it never just goes away. Like, for example, uh, like a Seva, you know, I mean, j- just those Manova, Kaya will come time and time again. There is nothing outside that. You know, those are uh, the, even Karl Popper talks about this Manova, Kaya. It's so beautiful. It's a three world interpretation, you know. That is Manova Kaya, but we'll not go into that. Today we'll focus on uh, one specific aspect because this one, uh, this word is much misunderstood. Okay. And it, it scares people. Okay. Brahmacharya. You know, I mean, that's like a tough one. And I'm not saying only um, uh, boys and men are saying this. Ladies will also say this. Ladies will also laugh. Okay. Come on now, you know, because that much the, sub, the word has become reductionist in nature. And what people have narrowed it down uh, to like a physical celibacy, you know, I mean, that's that. Now, physical celibacy is a very much part of this. And we will under- try to understand in some fashion. We can see, uh, see, it's like uh, in chemical um, reactions, like chemical engineering is um, my profession, or at least was my profession, I would say for many years, and my my passion, I should say. Um, If you want to study chemical reactions, chemical reaction engineering, or many things, I mean, that's not just limited to chemical reaction engineering, even mechanical engineering, and, uh, you know, the the trust and the stresses and everything, the balancing, you know, you, you do it through equilibrium. You know, when the balancing equal force becomes equal to zero, like a zero gravity kind of thing. In chemical reaction, you talk of equilibrium and from that you start learning. Okay, so similarly, what has happened in this uh, uh, subject is that it has gone away from that equilibrium. The true meaning of Brahmacharya is kind of lost or a one particular aspect of it is overemphasized. I mean, um, the emphasis is always there. But therefore, it has got a Vikrut type of uh, uh, understanding behind it. Okay, so Sanskriti, Prakriti, Vikruti, it is kind, kind of distorted is what my understanding is. We'll talk about why Brahmacharya is a foundation. We'll also talk about possible evolution depending on the uh, time of it. And sometimes you may start Brahmacharya for a certain reason, but then you yourself may evolve, we as an individual. Okay, uh, let's, let's start with an interesting uh, story, okay, where a very old historical uh, event, historical incident that happened um, uh, 7,500 years ago, the time of Mahabharata. 
Now, every time we don't, Adityaji, know the exact date of the event. In this case, we can tell the exact date of the event. Okay, because sometimes the evidence is such that we are capable using the science, using the logic, using the objective testing, Indriya Pramanya, we can decide this. So the date of this event is 3 November 5561 BCE. Okay, so that is what? Uh, 7500 years plus and one day after the war was over. Okay, after the Mahabharata war was over. Mahabharata war was over on 2nd November 5561 BC. This is a one day after. In fact, in a way, this is a part of that ongoing war. In fact, if you think of it, the war did not quite over at the end of the 18th day. Then the war continued through the night of the 18th day. It was very close to a full moon uh, day night. Uh, Duryodhana fell down. I mean, after fight with uh, Bhima. And while he fell down, but he's still alive, and uh, then, uh, uh, you know, Ashwatthama and uh, Krupa and uh, Krutavarma, they approach uh, Duryodhan, and Duryodhan makes Ashwatthama the military general. Okay, so Shalya, <laughs> in that sense, Shalya is not the last uh, commander chief for the Kuru army. Okay, Ashwatthama is made the Kuru chief as uh, the commander in chief of the Kuru army. And Ashwatthama tells his plan, a very vicious plan. You know, that is when at that night, the full moonlight kind of night, uh, and Krishna kind of suspects it. Therefore, he takes the Pandava somewhere else, but we'll not go into that story. And Durya, uh, Ashwatthama gets into the Pandava camp, kills all the five sons of Draupadi and many others. But after doing that, he knows what's coming. So he runs away. Ashwatthama is also a very powerful uh, individual, son of uh, Drona. Okay, very well trained into um, military weapons and Shastra and Astra and so on. But he knows what's going to come. So he runs away. When Pandavas come to know, Krishna Pandavas come to know, uh, Bhima gets after uh, Ashwatthama and of course Arjun uh, Arjun starts and Bhima joins okay so uh, you can see in the picture there by the way but Arjun and Bhima go after and the rest of the Pandavas also follow when Ashwatthama sees that the uh, Panda, Pandava Arjuna is coming immediately you know he's very scared you know he know what's coming so he actually without thinking much uh, uh, applies the Brahmastra and in response now, Arjuna also has to apply, you know, employ, you can say, Brahmastra. This is the scene that you are seeing there, okay? And then you see Vasudev, Narad Muni, and, you know, all the um, important people are coming there. And they're saying, this is not good for the earth, okay? Whatever that Brahmastra is, now people immediately uh, jump, oh, it's a nuclear weapon. You know, I mean... Comparing this is a reductionism, you know, so comparing Brahmastra with a nuclear weapon is also reductionism. We really don't know today what the, uh, what the Brahmastra is. We know what nuclear weapon is. Brahmastra can be similar to nuclear weapon and it can be totally different than the nuclear weapons, but a lazy tamasic. I have a word, I have a new word, uh, Aditya Ji, by the way. I have started calling this uh, multi-million tamas club members, you know, tamasic club members. So it's like a MTCM, MTCM, even I have to get used to it. Okay, so it's a multi-million Tamasic club members. They will not do any research. And we are going to talk about this tapa in a minute and the, how the Brahmacharya and Ahimsa and Sharirik tapa is connected. Okay, so in this case, what I want to tell you is that Ashwatthama is also extremely powerful, well-versed in Shastra and Astra. So is Arjun. What is very interesting is when Vyasadev asks both of them to take their weapons back. He said, that's not good for the earth. Okay, already earth has seen tremendous uh, torture. You know, many great warriors have gone last 18 days. Okay, it's not good. Now, here is the dilemma. Ashwatthama says, I know how to employ a Brahmastra. I do not know how to take it back. Actually, I don't know even the modern technology when they send the missiles, if they have an ability to take it back. I don't know if they have it. That was also very important with the uh, Astra. Not only that you know how to uh, employ it, but you can even stop midway, you can take it back. Now look at the beauty. The, Brahmach uh, the uh, Arjun 
Mahabharata tells us, and I have not quoted that verse from Mahabharata. In fact, what I have quoted is from Mahabharata, but it is from the Bhishma Parva Bhagavad Gita portion. Mahabharata tells us in that uh, uh, Sautik Parva, okay, of uh, last Parva after Shalya Parva, is that while Ashwatthama could not take it back, Arjun could take it back. Of course, the skill is involved, the tapa is involved, right? Uh, the the mindset, okay, that manova kaya sayama, the sayam on the intellect, the sayam on the mind, the sayam on the body, and that comes into sayam in your skill set, okay, whatever skills that you have. Arjun can take it back. Arjun says, okay, I will take it back. But Ashwatthama cannot take it back. And so, again, I'll not go into that story. So, Arjun does take it back. Now, Ashwatthama says, what do I do? And then uh, Krishna says, uh, but somewhere now it has to go. It has to carry out some objective, some purpose. And Krishna, and it, I'll not go into the details of it. It says, okay, you can uh, you can aim it towards the, the, somewhere he has to aim, you know, in that particular mood that he has set up. He has thrown it towards Pandavas and it has to do something to Pandava or some Pandava. And uh, so they say, suggest that, okay, send it towards the Garbha of Uttara, you know, where the Parikshit is going to be born. And uh, Krishna takes responsibility. Krishna says, I will protect. Yeah, you just do your job, but I know how to protect. And Krishna does that. And then the Parikshit is born. The point here I want to say it is very, very interesting. If you take the reductionist meaning of a Brahmacharya, now think of it, Ashwatthama is unmarried. At least Aditya Ji, to the best of my knowledge or the what, 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 do, what I hear. And if you know, otherwise you tell me. But you know, that's what Ashwatthama is unmarried. We don't at least hear of this. Now, Arjuna is married. Arjuna is married actually multiple times. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Subhadra and Draupadi and whatnot. Uh, Arjuna is not a Brahmacharya, uh, Brahmachari in the sense of the reduction is celibate. You know, in that sense, he is not. Okay. In fact, if you take Arjuna's uh, Yatra, you know, when he has gone uh, around during their uh, uh, certain years, you know, after they married to Draupadi. And again, that's a different story, digression, I'll not go there. And Arjuna has ma met many queens uh, or many princes on the way, you know, and he has created a progeny with them. So that's that story is there well in Mah Mahabharat. That same Mahabharat is saying Arjun could take it back because he was the Upasak or he was the follower or he was actually carrying out the Brahmacharya Vrata, which Ashwatthama was not. The reason I deliberately pick this story is to take uh, the viewers out of the reductionist idea of a celibacy. Now, that doesn't mean the Brahmacharya is not connected with the celibacy. It's very much is. And we'll talk about this. But there is a much more to Brahmacharya. In fact, it is about Brahmanishta. Brahmacharya, the Acharya, the Acharan. Brahmacharya means you uh, carry out the affairs of your life. Okay, everyday affairs of your life uh, through Varana system, through Ashrama system and anything else. Like Sanatana is about Nitya Nutana. It is capable of refreshing. So if your geographical location changes, if you change your location, like we are in America, the different set of criteria might apply. We might have to modify our things. Sanatana Nitya Nutana. But in this verse, Devadvija Guru Pradnya Pujanam Shauchamar Javam Brahmacharya Hinsacha Shariram Tapochate. This is the appendix, if you consider in the Bhagavad Gita. Because by 15th chapter, everything is been told. You know, the Sankhya whole yoga is told by second chapter, then Karma Yoga, Dhyana Yoga, okay, then Jnana Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, and then Jnana Yoga by 15th chapter, Purushottam Yoga. And then uh, if you look at it, the 16 and 17 are appendix. The 16 is about what? Uh, the um, the Devi Prakruti, Asuri pra, uh, Prakruti or Asuri Pravruti, that is appendix. The last one is the Sattva Rajatama and how that affects how we do the different activities. Okay, How do we da do dana? What kind of uh, diet we take? Uh, what kind of deity we worship? You know, Yajante Sattvika Deva, Yakshakshansi Rajasa, Pritam, Budaganashani, Yajante Tamasajana. That all discussion, how this, uh, what you started Aditya today, the three modes, uh, in the context of Saguna, Nirguna or Saguna, that, that has been discussed into this 17th chapter. Here, the important point is the Tapa, I'm going to go backward, Brahmacharya Mayusacha Shariram Tapa Uchate. Many times it is interesting in the Sanskrit, Sanskrit verses. If you want to understand the meaning of the verse, now this is just a heuristic, 
don't take it literally because the people who are stuck in a vakarana they will go on another stupid tangent otherwise but it is a very good uh, rule of thumb heuristics many times i mean most of the time that's why it's a heuristic it's a rule of thumb that means there can be exceptions but the point is if you start reading backwards you start getting the good meaning brahmachari amsacha shariram tapa uchchate okay so uchchate you start there tapa tapa of what of a sharira and now what brahmacharya ayusacha that sharirik tapa uh krishna and vasudev here in the sharirik tapa they are always including brahmacharya and ayusa that is the point i want to uh, mention now how consistent is this you see that consistent through mahabharata times you see this consistent through ramayana times okay uh, so is the sharirik tapa has a brahmacharya and ayusa but even in the relatively modern times we don't know the exact timing of say uh, bhagwan uh, mahavir uh, J- the jain uh, jaini you know jain dharma or jain sampraday uh, who established jain sampraday or bhagwan buddha right uh, bhagwan is used in a honorific for example uh, buddha who established supposedly the buddhi buddhi dharma all the principles that are used in jainism or buddhism can be seen Uh, again we can go aditya ji to bhagavat puran you know jada bharata and uh, so many you know so many others and other puranas and of course rama and mahabharat the principles are there okay uh, but the again just like we refresh ourselves sanatana nitya nutana mahavir ji at tried at one point uh, bhagwan buddha also tried at one point i am sh- trying to show you the consistency of it why i am doing this because the breaking india forces and try to work on jainism is now something totally different than hinduism or it is totally different in the sense of the whole uh, abrahamic religious concept no that's not true uh, same thing they will say for buddhism the whole uh, dalit narrative you know it's a breaking india narrative a lot of money has been pumped into india to destroy india um, our people are busy into bollywood fortunately now people are with all the bollywood nonsense and drug and all those scandals people are realizing how uh, compromise is everyone in bollywood practically everyone in bollywood uh, cricket you know that is also so much a nexus you know with the, with all the drugs and everything again that's not a subject my, but it's relevant my point is because of that people are just forgetting you know for this axis of evil what these different things are happening in india the breaking india forces therefore i'm mentioning it that mahavir ji also sharirik tapa he see mahavir ji also emphasize on the brahmacharya he also emphasize on ahimsa in fact you can say uh, the jainism you can look at it and remember i say i'm going all over uh, my apologies because too many thoughts are going my going in my head i mentioned while mentioning chemical engineering like you use the concept of equilibrium to understand it there is a, another concept uh, we can call it uh, worst case scenario okay or you take something to the level of breaking like for example when we design aircraft engines or, or boeing when they uh, do the design of a wing they actually send the aircraft i mean we used to send aircraft engine um, through all kinds of extreme stresses to see how far it can go before it breaks that in the context of jainism you can say that ahimsa the concept of ahimsa explored in jainism i will call it a radical ahimsa radical non violence and actually i talk with my jain friends i have many good jain friends and they agree they say yeah it is a, it is a radical non violence you know like many things that they will do and you know the extreme things you will get my point is it is radical but it allows you to truly understand what ahimsa could be at least at the level of a sharirik tapa okay not necessarily at the level of mind and intellect because you need to do different kinds of experiments but a taking a extreme approach like worst case scenario pushing it to the limits also allows you to understand that phenomenon in factual reality you know the phenomenon in reality but also its limitations so that's why jainism has tried that ahimsa brahmacharya i'll come to that brahmachari in the jainism for in a minute and then buddha also did that right buddha started this uh, sangha you know and sanyasis uh, who are living away from the cities top of the mountains and so on that is what uh, buddha did now buddha also did not uh, dare okay give this brahmachari or in the sense of a sanyasa uh, in the sense of a celib- celibacy and what not to the ladies okay because he said no nah, that will just Uh, totally confused the matter you know what he wanted to achieve as a sangha now 
in that context, you can give a great credit to um, Mahavirji. I mean, of course, what, what the reason why Buddha was, did not want to do it was also rational because you can see uh, some of the, uh, I, I don't know what's the right word, some of the uh, wrong output when, uh, you know, men women are combined and then given this sannyasa and all that. You can see that some uh, twisted um, organizations. So you have an example of that. But Mahavir, thousands of years ago, whatever his time, did the daring of even giving a sannyasa, a brahmacharya vrata to even ladies. Okay. And, uh, the, you know, the, therefore, shraman, there are, you know, shramana, that shramana parampara, there are also ladies, which you don't see in the Buddhism. Okay. At least not for a long time. In the modern times, you can see it. All right. Um, I talked enough about it, but that story is important. Sharirik tapa does include brahmacharya and ayusa. My point is that is said in Bhagavad Gita, that is also followed later on by Mahavirji and in his Sampradaya of Jainism, it is also followed by Buddha. Very, very consistent into this Sanatana Parampara. These are not, these can be considered different Sampradaya. They're not different religions, although people like to take pride and call them religion, mostly driven by breaking India forces. Let's go into the four ashrama and we will stop. Uh, guru, so for example, Let's take, now this is a, a simple classification, okay? Viva Rashmi, Viva Samuha. In order to understand a certain phenomenon, just like you can use the concept of equilibrium or you can use the concept of worst case scenario or forcing it to an extreme limit, whether it is designing of an aeroplane wing or aircraft engine or trying to understand the concept of Ayusa, okay? And that will apply to Ayusa, that will apply to Brahmacharya, and you'll see that literal brahmacharya. We will talk about Bhishma if we get time. Uh, through these kind of experiments, okay, that's why pratyaksha anubhavam, uh, pratyaksha, you know, is very much important, right? Uh, then, then only you truly start understanding these, these things. Unless you practice, you will not understand. Let's talk about the ashram. Uh, so four, four ashram, okay, brahmachari, uh, uh, brahmacharya ashram, grahastha ashram, vanaprastha ashram, and sannyas ashram. Okay, um, it is as as Aditya ji you uh, put it beautifully. It is very natural. You cannot get rid of it. Our body it seems to be designed because uh, the great sages looked at our body and looked at our lifespan and looked at the transformations that happen right from the childhood. Those transformation into any given person's lifetime. Okay, kaumariyam yavanam jara. And how they transform us and correspondingly they design this ashram. Okay. So that ashrama system is actually designed and is placed on, but it is based on tremendous empirical data. And that's why, as you said, it cannot go away. Doesn't matter which country, doesn't matter which place around the world. They may not call by these names, but the reality remains that way. Let's talk. So what they did just to simply explain to the masses. Okay. Uh, which is called, uh, you know, so Swarthanuman, but now Pararthanuman. How do you simply explain to people? They said, well, let's consider our life as 100 years. Okay. Now we know that nobody's life is exactly 100 years. To consider our life as 100 years. That's a typical lifespan. Think of first 25 years as a Brahmacharya ashram. The next 25, from 25 to 50, as a Grosta ashram. The next 25 from 20, say 50 to 75 is a Vana Prastashram, Vana, that is the, you know, going to the forest. We'll talk about this. It's not exactly going to the forest always. And as I said, Sanatana Nitya Nutana, depending on circumstances, you have to adjust accordingly to those circumstances. Uh, even they uh, did that time, sometime took it literally. We'll talk about that also. And the last one is Sanyasa Ashram, which is 75 to 100. Okay. Now that doesn't mean you have to wait for 75 before taking sannyas, you know, and what you will find Aditya ji, uh, I mean, you know it, but for our audience that the brahmacharya is a common thread, just like we talked about um, the common minimum program from a Varna perspective. For all the Varnas, this is the Dharma. Ayusa Satya Masteya Akama Akroda Alobata. Thinking of the well-being of all living entities. This is a common minimum program for from a Varna perspective. From Ashrama perspective, 
What is that? Sarvashrama prayuktoyam niyamakulanandana madbhava sarvabhuteshu. Always thinking of a Brahma at the center. That is that Brahmacharya, guys. Madbhava sarvabhuteshu. And that is having that same attitude, what you are, have the attitude towards Brahma, towards all the living entities, which means what? To see Brahma in everything. Creating that Brahma Nishta is the goal. Madbhava sarvabhuteshu. How are you going to create this Brahma Nishta? You are going to create, create it through a sayam, mano vak kaya sayama, through the sayam of the mind, of the intellect, vak, and of the body. And that is where that brahmacharya comes. But again, as I said, we are taking very reductionist only to the celibacy. Celibacy matters, okay? Bodily control, the sayam matters, but that is a one small part of it. Don't forget the big picture. So, first 25 years. The, the emphasis, and I'm just giving this again for a simple remembering. Think of this as a Guru Nishta. Why Guru Nishta is required? Aditya Ji and myself, we talk offline, meaning when we talk typically before the program or after the program uh, to plan our next program or whatnot. We talk about this all the time. Okay. For example, many people, many people listen to this, many people read my books, and of course, the books of Aditya Ji and many other. Uh, in a good Indic folks who are doing good work and they will not understand it many times or they will misunderstand. Now, again, if you read Bhagavad Gita, you will understand your buddhi is a tamasic, guys. Polish it, clean it up, make it sattva, then make it rajas first, then at least you will understand 50% and make it sattva, then you will get it close to 100%. Okay. One of the problem though, besides that polishing the buddhi is that guru nishta that is required is simply not there. Most of the responses that I will get, whether in social media, email, everything, is most of them, I'm saying, there are exceptions, is usually in a challenging tone. Now, that is not a problem. The problem is to, in order for you to ask something in a challenging tone, you should have done some tapasya. I find a, anyone, no exception in my last 10 years of social interaction, not even a single individual I have found who coming to me, asking me something in challenging tone and the one who is also truly understands what I have done. I have not found a single individual. Anyone coming in a challenging tone basically has not bothered to read my words. If they have read it, they have not understood it. And most cases, they have totally misunderstood. You know, people who review my books, there is this uh, some uh, guy in PhD in history and, and he has a uh, one day I will talk about it, Aditya Ji, maybe on your show we will do it. Uh, he has reviewed it and I'm glad he did it, you know, because it, he has started this manthan on YouTube or wherever. Yeah, YouTube, it's on YouTube. Uh, it's a good manthan. But I mean, what atrocious nonsense that he's, he has spouted out and I'm glad that he has done it and it is in the print, meaning it is in the media. So somebody cannot just say, oh, I never said it, you know. So at some point I will, whenever time permits, I'll do it. But back to this, the Guru Nishta is lacking. And the part of Guru Nishta is a Purva Paksha. Before you critic someone, you have to understand what he or she is saying on that person's terms. That's why you need a Guru. Okay. When you have nothing, you don't start fighting about the knowledge. Well, I don't think this is correct. I don't think this is wrong. First learn. And what you are seeing here, picture again, you can see, the, read that beautiful story in the Mahabharata. Okay. And it has got all these complexions, uh, complex cities rather that I am describing here. This is a Kacha. Okay. And uh, the, the sitting next to his Guru Shukracharya. I will not take you into that story. Okay. But if it is not understood properly, if you don't have that Guru Nishta, if your focus is not the Brahma Nishta, then lot of complexities, lot of confusion will happen. What is the role of a guru? Yasya deve para bhakti, yatha deve tatha guru, tasyete kathita yartha, prakashante mahatmana. He who has highest bhakti, love, devotion of a deva, just like his deva, so for his guru, that is required. You say, I will bypass the guru, that will not happen. Now, of course, you can have a many multiple gurus, okay? That's a Audhud Gita and will not go there today. Again, I will encourage you to everyone to read Bhagavad Purana. To him, by the way, to that individual who shows this devotion towards Guru, to whom, to him who is high-minded, because that's how he's high-minded, these teachings will be illuminating. For all other individuals, it will be confusing. Okay, it leads to delusion, it leads to their degradation, it leads to their destruction. This is from Shweta Shvetan Upanishad. Now, what happens? The person studies. In fact, uh, just for one second, I'll go back. 
if you take a, a example of uh, say uh, pandavas uh, we don't have the exact details but if you take example of uh, uh, rama rama is a good one okay rama started learning all the knowledge at a very young age okay and by the time he is 16 guys okay i am mean, here you know in the wokeism <laughs> you know people are 16 they are they are just waking up uh, with my colleagues or even ex colleagues and you know their children and sometime here i am talking in the american context and not talking of even uh, indians that's another issue uh, i'll talk and sometime i'll go to their house and their kid is like a 30 year old <laughs> okay i'm not i'm not making up stories i i have hundreds of stories like this uh, from last 30 years and so i would say oh, what do you do um, and the person says well i'm kind of trying to figure it out you know the person is 30 year old <laughs> person is 20 year old 26 year old any 35 year old some time and trying to figure out what he or she wants to do in life okay when ram was 16 years old even when he had not completed what happened he was already expert in many things and to give the final finesse when he just barely turning 16 uh, uh, vishwamitra rushi comes and you know how the education is happening this is not like doing no doing any damn thing just parents are taking care of you and you are going to school okay that is our modern education system vishwamitra comes to uh, ram i mean dashrath and he doesn't say okay bring give me your son i will teach him no 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 he says give me your son i need him to protect my yajna immediately that remember brahmacharya ayusacha shariram tapa uchyate through this tapa sharirik tapa the person is learning okay so he takes uh, he meaning vishwamitra takes ram and lakshman to protect his yajna but what ram and lakshman are getting they are not a slave labor they, they are Vishwamitra is to them a guru and what do they learn bala ati bala all kinds of shastra and astra all kinds of uh, intellectual wisdom all kinds of uh, how to do deal with the mind manova kaya all kinds of wisdom they are getting and it is happening just in a real life you know just like as the things are being done not some sitting in some uh, in front of computer or sitting in some uh, school classroom none of that okay they're just, just teaching him that's the beauty that comes from guru nishtha in fact they had i mean this will be a bit digression but they had gone to siddhashram to protect the yajna uh, that uh, vishwamitra was conducting and it was not getting completed because of the breaking india forces because of the uh, you know any enemy forces they protected and after that they just don't say after six days for six days day and night they are uh, um, awake and protecting it when that is done actually they are exhausted right they should be exhausted uh, well they were doing good exercise they were not exhausted and now uh, vishwamitra says we are going to mithila because janak is also doing a yajna there come with us and they don't say oh no 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 i now want to go see and parents like six days that's like a, so much separation from the parents and don't start crying that is you know and they're 16 years old okay they're just learning through this uh, because of the conviction in the words of guru when that is not there and we see this even in the this so called social media that is when people come in the challenging tone you know what i do i mean depending on the social media uh, technology available you know, somebody asks some uh, idiotic question you know and the person may be following me may not be following me it doesn't matter i the person goes at least in twitter he goes or he or she whoever goes on mute which means i am not going to bother reading what they say so therefore if they want me to see their comments they have to be very careful what they put there in um, facebook i mean if person gets idiotic then i just block them and just move on email i also block their email or i don't respond to them i put them into the that kind of folder and so on the important point is guru nishtha is important first you have to understand before you start critiquing okay let's go to um, Grostashram. Now, Grostashram uh, and Adityaji mentioned that like people tend to prefer that they almost take this as a license for sex. Let's talk. Let's talk real stuff. You know, uh, this is the beauty of again uh, Sanatan Vedic religion that there is no taboo, or there should not be taboo. Sometimes Sanskriti turning to I mean, Prakriti is a sort of central thing. From that evolution can be Sanskriti, but the devolution can be Vikruti. And many Vikrutis have also entered uh, our system. We should not deny them. We should not be blindsided to them. Uh, but there, sh there should not be any taboo. 
For example, take the word, I mean, growing up, I can tell you in India, uh, like, uh, you know, for ladies, like the menstruation was like a sort of a subject not to be discussed. Even the ladies will make big fuss and, you know, it's like that. Now, I'm so glad, like likes of uh, uh, Sinu Josephji, you know, they have, she has written a wonderful work, had done great research on the Rutu Charya. That's these subjects are discussed uh, uh, very openly and they were discussed before. But somewhere with, because of some foreign invasions and their dogmatic attitude and dogmatic mindset, and you know, I don't know, there could be additional factors. Let's just not blame them because we need to be introspective. But some pro- vikrutis were started. Okay, same thing with the sex. I mean, we have a we cannot have a taboo attitude, which could be the Victorian, the West, Western European prudishness that might have entered, but we could have our own problems, which might have led to those also. Just let's not blame the Europeans or the foreign invasions and whatnot. My point is, uh, what is the idea of a Grasta Ashram? Okay, so that same Brahmacharya is there as a factor during the Brahmacharya Ashram. Now, people will say that's just given. But here uh, also, uh, the Brahmacharya is also still there. Okay, I mean, I mean, Brahmacharya, of course, the Brahmanishta, but even in the sense of Manova Kaya Sayama, in the sense of you have to also control your body. Okay, Sayama. Sayama doesn't mean denying it. Okay, Sayama means control. Okay, uh, so how is it done? It is done through this institution of a marriage. Okay, the marriage is again probably the wrong word, but we can we'll use that. We are doing this program in English. Okay, so that vivaha samstha, you can say, or the grihastha ashram samstha. And we can go into this rule. If we tell the rules, for example, the idea behind that is um, you will do okay the sex for progeny, only for progeny. Now, if that has been said, then all the men's, but all the ladies are also going to go gaga. You know, who's listening? What? Because that how far we have come down. But you can see examples of this. If Brahmanishta is your focus and if you have organized your life, it's not easy. Nobody is perfect. Okay. Uh, everyone is on that journey. If you get focused on a specific point and that becomes your obsession, I'm deliberately using that word, that becomes your focus. Then some of these things that otherwise you think is like a big deal, such as a sex, for example, and a party and whatnot, they just fall away. Okay. You just don't find interested. Ekanta vishay priti jana sangata navada. You know, like this is Bhagavad Gita and translating in Marathi with Vinoba's Gita. You just see that. You just like to be alone. That doesn't mean you are antisocial, but you want to be in a social setting when the social setting is conducive for the kind of things that you are doing, the Brahmanishta. So mutual, here also there is a Nishta. Brahmanishta is always the background. Brahmachari is always there in the background. But it's a mutual pati patni nishta. Okay, this is a mutually agreed upon, and you're just sticking to that. Okay, in the Marathi, like Marathi uh, drama is a you know especially in last 100 200 years it, it has evolved to a very good extent. Uh, it started some hundred plus years, and uh, at the beginning there will be something called Nandi, the first song when the um, when the when the screen has not opened up, you know and. I just you are praying and let every the drama let that particular program be well and in that one of the nandi many nandi songs are written uh, that's uh, i used to uh, i used to watch dramas i love dramas especially the sangeet natak and i used to listen to that and as a child i used to laugh at it you know so what is this saying for example one line uh, they are saying uh, to uh, i think shiva i think but it will say vivaha karuni madana zarila like Shiva opened the third eye and then Madan was, Kamadev was killed, right? Or burnt, uh, referring to that story. Vivaha Karuni Madan Zarila. You know, so the, the person got into the Vivaha Bandhan to kill the Madan inside. That Madan is also inside, right? That Kama, you know. So uh, through Vivaha, it was managed. It was controlled. It was eliminated how beautiful now i see beautiful that time i used to laugh you know and those people who know the meaning in marathi they will relate to that the point here is again the brahmanishta is there at the center brahmachari is at the center but you are managing it through that pati patni mutual nishta again there should not be any taboo about it and many of my uh, I would say researchers, my good friends who are happens to be researchers, they are doing this just like Sinu Joseph has done wonderful work on uh, Rutu Charya. Okay. Uh, Kama, Kama Sutra. Okay. There is uh, one individual I know, he completed his PhD in uh, JNU just now on a, 
Kama Sutra and a social context. Um, he sent me the thesis. My point is, these kind of works needs to come up. And I think Aditya Ji, he was on your show once. I mean, I didn't get to watch that uh, particular program. Uh, again, I'm not getting his name right now, uh, but he p- finished his PhD from JNU. My point is, these are the subjects that are very openly, liberally, in a scientific manner, in a logical Mishra manner. Ji. Mishra huh? Ji. Mishra Ji. Uh, huh. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, first name. Right. Is, uh, yeah, first name also I'm missing, right? But yeah, uh, Raghavendra. Raghavendra Mishra Ji. Right? Exactly, so, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah, I mean, I know him for a, for a while and uh, we have di- had discussed at length. These kind of works need to come, okay? It's, it's very, very important. Uh, now, what are you doing? If you see, uh, I, I want to move on and just complete. Uh, you will find it looks like, ah, Grosta Ashram is for me. You may f- actually, you will realize that Grosta Ashram is the hardest of all four, if followed in the proper way. Okay, Brahmacharya Ashram, like you know, think of Adi Shankara, think of Nyaneshwara, okay, think of um, uh, Acharya Vinoba Bhave, think of Samartha Ramdas Swami, and there are many others. My point is, um, Samartha Ramdas Swami, he uh, that time the uh, you know, Vivaha used to happen at a very young age. Samartha Ramdas Swami was very young, we don't know exact age, but maybe 10 year old, you know. And uh, when uh, uh, the, the his uh, Vivaha is taking place, and they're saying Shubha Mangala Savadhana. He says, they're saying this is Shubha Mangala. This is a very auspicious occasion. Why are they warning me to be cautious? Shubha Mangala Savadhana. Why are they warning me to be cautious? And the story goes that right from right in the middle of the Vivaha, you know, the, the antar part, you know, that uh, piece of cloth between the bride and a groom is there. And he ran away from there and he remained a brahmachari. Now, that is somewhat easier than actually getting into Grosta and following the laws and uh, rules and regulations of Grosta. That is the tough one. Okay, but again, Brahma Nishtha is the focus. Brahmacharya is there in the background and it is done through that Pati Patni Nishtha. So, Guru Nishtha, it is there now. We are taking it to Nishtha to each other, that mutual Nishtha, not anywhere other than that. Okay, it's like a restricted, it's like deliberately restricted, okay, in a controlled manner. That's what you are doing. But you never forget your ultimate goal. And therefore, um, now you get into one prastashram. Now, somebody will take it literally. Therefore, I picked this picture. This is uh, uh, Dhrutarashtra, Gandhari, Kunti. Of course, what they did is correct because they were royalty. And that's why the idea behind going to the one and away from the capital is that because they have so much experience, they may be tempted to give advice to the next generation. And that is to be avoided. And therefore, they have gone to the forest and eventually uh, they uh, end their lives through the forest fire. I mean, forest fire happens and they go through it. Um, this The person who is moving is a Vidura and will not go into that story. I would encourage everyone to read Mahabharata. The point is, uh, so I'm saying this is like literally one prastha, you go to the forest. Basically, the idea is going away from, it's not truly going to the forest. I mean, you can go to the forest. The point is, it's for a it's a time for manovak contemplation not so much the sharirik tapa not so much the karmic activities uh, for your family for the protection of your family or if you are a king protection of the kingdom but get more into that contemplative mood manovak and then using that knowledge for the benefit of society therefore i'm saying one prastha is to be truly understood as a samajanishta so those people say, again, just taking that age of 50, uh, it's not exact age. I told you why 25, 25, 25, 25, because it's just to explain simply to common masses. Okay, But at what point when you think, uh, and especially those fortunate people who have uh, by luck, daivam chevatra but also with their hard efforts, also with their skills, have earned wealth. It is a time, I don't, I don't mean just the wealth, wealth in the not in the sense of a money, but wealth of a uh, you know, knowledge kind, certain expertise, but of course, uh, the finances, wealth. They have to now think of how they can utilize it well, meaningfully, not in a foolish fashion, by, by giving it uh, foolishly to and breaking India forces, uh, creating uh, these uh, Hindu chairs in American universities and thinking that that is going to do good to Hindus. No, it won't do any good. Okay, Audrey Trushke would be taking that chair. How foolish many of our peoples are who don't understand this. But to using those resources for Samajanishta. 
So we talked of Guru Nishta, we talked about a mutual Pati Patni Nishta. Now in a Vana Prastashram, it is a Samaj Nishta. Now all that experiences that you have accumulated through your knowledge, like through the Brahmacharya Ashram, but through also Grosta Ashram, the practical applications of that Brahmacharya Ashram, whatever you learned there. Now uh, your body is going to get weaker, relatively speaking, I'm talking. You want to also, uh, you know, take it, go away from your family, or rather what I'm saying is think not away from family, think beyond your family. Okay, think beyond. Me, mine, yeah, that was good for 25 years. Even the gross, that's why I said gross trashram is the toughest because gross trashram is not about me and mine. If you remember, like some of these now only they have survived Adityaji only in a ritual form. Like before we eat, we take, uh, you know, auti and put it on the side. We, I also don't no longer do that, you know. Uh, but this is for what? For all the living entities, for the ants and for others. Then there is like, uh, you know, uh, uh, I, I'm not getting the word, but that you will take certain food. And I mean, I, I did that growing up. It was one of my duties, like go and put it outside. And when you put it outside, uh, the, the crows and the, the birds, they will come. Then there is a go grass, like, you know, some you create a certain thing and go give it to the cow, that same portion of a meal. Okay. I mean, these were there, but now they have only uh, stayed in a ritual form. That was the duties of a grosta. They were hardest. Grosta is the hardest. If you understand it is in proper meaning and the spirit. Now, in this case, you are going beyond your family, thinking of the society. That is a Samaja Nishta. You, all the wisdom, all the things, practical experiences that you have learned, you want to get into the mentor role, into the counselor role. That is the idea behind this Samaja Nishta. Again, Brahma Nishta is the objective. So let's get to the last one. Brahma Nishta and the finally Sanyasha Ashram is a Brahma Nishta. Okay, you will see that everywhere. I mean, Bhagavad Gita, you know, your Brahma, 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 where Brahma, now Brahma, you know, you are going to get that, right? Similarly, this is also, yeah, from Bhagavad Gita, right? You know, I pulled it. Ne, so, Sanyasi, Neya, Sa, Nitya Sanyasi, Yona, Dveshti, Na, Kangshati, Nirdvandvo, Hi, Mahabaho, Sukham, Bandhat, Pramuchate. He is known as a permanent sannyasi who does not hate, does not desire, is without duality, is opposites, truly a Mahabaho, Mahabaho meaning truly hey Arjuna, is Krishna is saying, he is liberated from bondage. That is Brahmanishta. In fact, when we say um, the four Purushartha, uh, Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha, the, the very idea that there are four Purushartha, that is to be achieved here. So dhar, why people think, well, how, how uh, vikrut idea is this? So dharma, artha, kama, we are going to do it here. Somehow the moksha is only after the death. Who told you that? You know, who told this? The moksha is also to be achieved right here in Marathi, achi dehi, achi dora. How's that? If you have, if you achieve these qualities, which I also described through the Varna minimum common program for Varna, minimum common program for uh, Ashrama, and you understand this, see, no, never forget the Brahman Nishta is a focus no matter which Ashrama you are, which Varna you are, but your progress is going to be in a different fashion coming to it. And ultimate idea is a Brahman Nishta. That's why that uh, Brahmacharya. For example, um, Mundaka Upanishad, Satyena Labhyas Tapasa Yeshatma. The Brahma, the Sat, what is, even when everything dissolves, what remains is a Brahma. What is Satyena Labhyas Tapasa Yeshatma? That therefore, the Tapasya, that is, how do you do it? How do you get to that Brahma Nishta or understanding of a Brahma or a Sat? Through Tapasya. No other way. Hard work, reading, studying, Swadhyaya, Abhyasa, Yoga. No alternative whatsoever, guys. Which age doesn't matter. Just sitting in an idle chair and just uh, doing about it will not take you there. Okay. Just fighting without even knowing anything, asking some stupid questions will not take you there. Okay. Then what? Okay. Satyena Labhyas Tapasa Yesha Atma Samyak Dhyanena Brahma Charena Nityam. This is a sequence to understand Sat, you are doing Tapasya. And through hard work, Guru Nishtha, Brahma Nishtha, you are going to understand the Samyak Dhyan, the truly balanced knowledge. Not some extremities, not some faulty knowledge, not some biased opinions, not some uh, authority fallacy. No, hell, that's nonsense. Get away from it. Okay. Samyak jnane, no, you have to have a balanced knowledge, the true knowledge. Samyak jnane, no, Brahmacharya, no, 
nityam you have to follow the brahmacharya nitya it is not given for any particular ashram this is from upanishad right everywhere that uh, thought in the background ought to be there okay quickly uh, so actually aditya ji i did not get a time to do the summary so it is coming from another one <laughs> i put a summary slide there thinking i will write it uh, well so brahmacharya is much more than a physical celibacy physical celibacy is very much part of it but it is there for a reason okay it is to be controlled it is to be managed in that sense um in all of this the brahmanishtha is the ultimate goal the mukti is to be experienced right here it can be experienced and the four stages are created as a guru nishtha as a mutual pati patni nishtha then samaj nishtha now give it to the society when you are giving it to the society you are not doing a favor to the society many people think like this when you are giving a dana people think they are doing a favor no shankaracharya has said yatha shakti samvibhaga iti dana iti danam right samvibhaga iti dana okay based on your limited ability whatever or your ability a attempt made for the equitable distribution of wealth is a dana okay society has already given you a lot now this is a time for you to do your best attempt to repay the society you are not doing a favor okay why i am saying this you are not doing a favor well people will praise you and that is good and that's rightful rightful justified you don't let it go into your head and again i'm not talking when i'm talking dana i'm not just talking a dana in the sense of a money that also is but the not giving of a knowledge uh, you know uh, what you have what you know like ramda swami says you know whatever you know tell avagya janasi you know and educate them that is that is the message of it that is the idea of a brahmacharya and on that uh, let me stop sharing aditya ji i don't know how i did on time maybe i would have gone more but you tell me no oh, i think you are perfect on time uh, so so very beautiful presentation on this thing the shloka which i forgot earlier was atha pumbir duja shreshta varnashma vibhakasha chanushti tasya dharmasya samsiddhi haritoshanam exactly like the, all the ashrams are important the purpose is more important hmm. why you are getting into an ashram and uh, one of the first questions we had that why only one ashram is what we ourselves call uh, that uh, and you gave very good example on arjun versus ashwatthama the uh, why grahastha ashram is the most popular others are not popular hmm. i think it is also do with the media propaganda also you know yeah. lot of media propaganda is there and also the people who do not understand sanskrit yeah or the re- reductionism and twisting of what these ish ashram represents right so good, that's why i said i put it in a um, as straight language as one can say the grahastashram and prabhupad used to say uh, like grahastashram has now become a license for sex right Lit- literally like this right and uh, i mean we are all guilty of it you know we are all guilty of it like how it is taken and i'm not just saying it's a man or woman and I'm, therefore i'm saying this subject should be openly discussed frankly you know That's- and so if you have a higher purpose you can find some sci- scientist you know i'm using scientist as example um the person who is say so focused on say solving certain aspect of some uh, you know a dna or uh, some quantum mechanics that person he or she may not bother getting into anything they may not have a social life my point is uh, that is also brahmanishta That's okay right. artha jignasu arthartid gnani cha bharatarshava there are four types of bhakta jignasu Yes. is a jignasu okay and these are all udara krishna is saying these are all magnanimous devotees you know yes. so that person will able to focus because that is a aspect of a brahmanishta that's right because he is trying to understand he or she is trying to understand the truth satya na labhyas tapasaya shatma but because it is reduced because it has become reductionist therefore we have got this idea that grahastha ashram is what people prefer or i don't know the question that you were reading whatever you said uh, were they asking why the brahmacharya ashram brahmacharya you word is used only for the first ashram i don't know if that was the question actually the see the brahmacharya ashram is the fastest one also Mm-hmm. and it is needed at all levels all the four ashram have that essential quality that you have to follow brahmanishta and yeah. that is called brahmacharya that's why arjun is right. considered brahmachari even though he is married right. yeah when when all the rishis used to come to a uh, forest when pandavas in the forest narad muni 
Markande Rushi, Dhaume Rushi was all, also always with the him, with them more or less. Um, uh, you can think of other Rushis. Now my names are not coming uh, right now. Pulaste. But uh? Pulaste. Pulaste and and many others, right? I mean, the, the one of Parva. You can no, say Pulista, so. Pulista is the one who said there is no Rishi greater than Arjun. Ah, uh, interesting. Very, yeah. very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there you go, right? Of all and, the Rishis, and, he said. Yeah. Yeah, and one thing I would say also in that context is. Uh, everything about these individuals uh, that are discussed in the mahabharata our itihasa we don't know everything about them so sometimes you know the the narrations about them have come only in the context of the mahabharata mainstream story so therefore sometimes we say oh why is that arjun in spite of like you know people say like even i think like that you know when he went on this yatra uh, like you know the all the princes uh, different places like you know he's creating progeny with them so it's like what's going on you know something like this but we have to understand that we have to go to the social system varnashram system whatever was prevalent the other rules and regulations you know of that time the dharma sutras of that time we cannot apply the dharma sutras of our times to their times and vice versa okay, okay to understand what they were doing yeah. Also, the uh, one uh, one of the things is like the brahmacharya is needed, like you very accurately said to withdraw the weapon. Like there is a brahmanishtha and there is a certain level of yoga siddhi hmm. that you need to to access that point where the the subtlety becomes the mainstream. Hmm. And now all those arts and swadhyaya has vanished, tapasya has vanished, abhyas has vanished. So trying to live in the past glory can only lead to a current fall. So, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so, so we have to like, his, uh, you know, I was thinking about the last show we had and then you said that everything is Prateksha. Hmm. So Prateksha can be in mind also, can be yeah. in, in intelligence also. Yes. Or it can be through instrument, telescope, instrument. like something that you cannot see with your naked eyes, but you can see through telescope or microscope is also Prateksha. Exactly. Exactly. Just, just Netra Chakshu is not enough. Correct. So you need a Shastra Chakshu as well as Netra Chakshu. Then otherwise you will get mistaken. Just, just like in any theory also, you may have all the meters in front of you, but gauges like in a plane when you're flying a plane, but you cannot understand by the gauges itself. You have to still look outside the window. <laughs> Bring it together. Bring it together. Krishna's quadrangulation, you know, Shruti Prateksha Maitiyam Anumanam Chatushtayam. So you are seeing the gauges, those may be Prateksha, but the another Prateksha is see through the window and see, does this make sense? Exactly. My, my map is saying I'm flying over Denver. Does it yes. look like Denver below? <laughs> and, yeah. And the most important thing is like uh, the, the pilots, that's why they're given a window, even in the big planes, to actually see how close you are to the ground or you're on the cloud or your engine is stalled, you're moving or not moving. And like, so you can apply this anywhere or, a, or on a road when you're driving. Yeah. So you cannot just live in your mind. The police will give you a chalan for that. But again, right. you have to see protection. Whom are you going to, is a signal coming? So all those things are needed. So not just Shastra, this is applicable in regular lifestyle also. Correct. Uh, can I add something to it? Please. Like. Uh, uh, again, uh, like we shouldn't get stuck in the past glory and how we have to create the present. Uh, also, uh, you just mentioned like, you know, Prateksha as Patanjali Yoga Sutra, like in his, uh, just like Krishna uses it. See, everyone is saying the same thing, right? So, Ayimsa Satya Mastaya. So, on his Panchavrata, you know, like Patanjali is saying uh, that also he includes Brahmacharya, yes, you sir. know, right? Ayimsa he includes. And he says, when you finally perfect this, you get Rutambhara Pradnya. That's right. Okay. Sometime you will just do uh, one time show on the Rutambhara Pradnya. Yes. Okay. Rutambhara Pradnya. See, uh, and that's why sometimes, of course, we are at a different stages, all of us. But when you understand something so easily, I mean, say, again, I relate to my work, Mahabharata dating, Ramana dating, Rugveda, I'm saying. And then somebody takes it and totally twists it exactly 180 degree opposite. And it used to frustrate me before. I'm saying, what kind of nonsense is this? Why, why it is so simple? My six-year-old daughter could understand, explain it to the her classmates. And here is some so-called famous popular <laughs> Indic researcher, you know, decorated and will not utter a word, will not dare talk about this and more than likely doesn't understand it or may feel envious, whatever the issue may be. And I'm saying, why is this happening? 
because uh, first thing I used to think maybe out of enviousness and enviousness could be a factor. But then sometime when I talk to these individuals, I understand, I, I come to know that they have truly not understood what Arundhati Vasishta is doing, what Bhishma is, is sitting on the bed for 92 days plus. They don't believe that. I said, where comes the question of belief? Vyasadeva has written in the Mahabharata. I can open the verses, tell me your challenge. Then I realized that even for understanding these, these things, you need a certain level of pradnya, a certain level of intellect. Okay, so something that people see and they get excited. People tell me they read uh, my Mahabharata book and they go through Varundati Vasishta, they quickly do the astronomy simulation and they say, you know what, Nilaji, I could not sleep through the whole night. So there they have that pradnya and pradnya can come through different sources, Shraddha, Virya, Smriti, Samadhi, pradnya, Purvaka. But the, before saying this particular uh, sutra, uh, actually, um, uh, uh, this uh, um, Patanjali says that you can get this because of all the activities you have done in the past life. That's right. But if you don't get this because of a past life, you can achieve it in this life through Shraddha, Virya, Smriti, Samadhi, Pradnya, Purvak. Right. And Shraddha is that Guru Nishta. Shraddha, conviction is a Nishta. Guru Nishta, Pati Patni Nishta, Samaj Nishta, Brahma Nishta. You stole, I think you read my mind. That was my next point. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. If, if you if you and I keep on talking, we can talk for the whole day. Uh, different points are there. But the thing is, you know, again, brings back to the basic Guru Nishtha, you said, very important topic because, uh, because without, you know, so Guru should not be a fashion. We can do another mm. show on that. There are so many topics or shows. Should not be a fashion. It's a matter of humility. Now, if you know, if you do not uh, do any tapasya, don't do any swadhyaya, don't do any yoga, whether you do japa, hatha, jo, whatever you want, you can do. You cannot get access to the deeper realms of the shloka because yes. it is not possible. To, these shloka reveal themselves. Like I always say, yeah. Gita speaks to you and you don't read Gita. Yes. So, so it's, it's, a, it's, it's the other way around. It's the other way around. And the secondly, you said the buddhi. You know, if the brain size was a matter of buddhi, then there are people with bigger heads also, they're bigger fools also. <laughs> so, so brain size has nothing to do with the buddhi. And again, it comes with the purva janma samskar. Right. It's all uh, the buddhi is a matter of karma, not right. about the brain size. You know, so connecting people's intelligence to the size of the brain, scientists, you know, it doesn't matter that people have smaller brain or bigger brain based on skull size. Right. But some people are supremely intelligent. I mean, even if the skull size is smaller. So true, true. No, I mean, I was just because because you said no, I was going to look for that verse, but that may that may take time, you know. So that's fine. Yeah, yeah what well, you said the the purva janma, you know, like uh, of course uh, we do it through shraddha, virya, smriti, samadhi, pradnya, purvaka. That's fine, but that he says if um, you can get it from your past. But even if not, that doesn't mean it is the end of it. Yeah, you can you can actually achieve it uh, if you are ready to do the tapasya. By the way, you mentioned japa, and it's very important to mention in, even in that context that uh, japa is also tapa. That's right. That's right. right? It is tapa. In, in fact, the idea is that eventually it becomes so antarik, so internal that uh, you are doing it. Um, like Ashwini, you had it, you had her on the show, right? So she will she will just say to her even she, her experience, and she doesn't share publicly. This is not meant to be shared. But she will say inside when we are just doing, uh, she is a Devi Bhakta, and she will just get those uh, feeling as if like she is chanting because she does japa, yes, sir. which is a tapa. But therefore, even when she is not saying it. Uh, she will feel like she's doing a japa. That yes. is the power of it. In the Vibhuti Yoga, Krishna tells mm -hmm. us it's a yagya. Japa is a yagya. Japa yagya. Yeah. So it's, yeah. a, it's not just uh, something. And uh, people do not know that just like the, the Dashrath was Vartha Varchasva, Vashisht is Japa Varchasva. Vashisht. Mm. So it's, 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 a, it's a common principle amongst all the Rishis Munis. Who it's is the Vartha Varchasva you said? Dashrath Maharaj. And what does that mean? Means he's nobody can defeat him in diplomacy, in talk. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's Very why Ra Ram got the quality of Vartha Varchasva. And same, hmm. Vashisht is called Japa Varchasva. Uh, so it's yeah. not a, like not like like I tell people that, uh, you know, Bhakti Siddhanta used to say, 
don't try to see bhagwan hmm do your karma in such a way that bhagwan tries to see you it's easy bhagwan comes to, bhagwan comes to you that's right that's right and that was a whole story of uh, pandarpur pundalik pundalik pundalik, pundalik. <laughs> where krishna yeah. did not come to see him but krishna yeah. came to see his parents Correct. oh sorry him not his no, no, parents, him. parents or him. devotees yeah parents because he is serving his parents parents yes, yes. yeah and yeah. and and that's where he tells uddhav also mad bhaktiya pujya vidika hmm so worship my devotee means serve my devotee yeah. then i will be pleased with you right and 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 therefore again i'm not getting the exact lines right now eknath maharaj says um uh, you know when santa when santa comes to the devotees to come to your house and if you are doing a puja okay he says deva sarave parate parate okay right. put it on them on the side go uh, honor the santa that's right you that's know right. yeah you know thank you so nilesh ji we can talk hours and hours and uh, thank <laughs> you all and uh, thank you all for joining do comment on the show and and let us know your feedback we are not into any popularity contest we are only <laughs> focused on good discussions which can add value to you namaste Thanks. namaskar Thank you.